Is there a place where we could put a mammoth if we brought it back? Sergei Zimov thinks so. Sergei Zimov is a colleague of mine. He's the director of, the, of a scientific outreach station in Chersky, northeastern Siberia. And he's bought a 40,000 acre plot of land in north central Siberia where he's trying to recreate what he calls Pleistocene Park. <laughs> Obviously, also read the cheesy 1990s action novel. <clears throat> Sergei Zimov has so far introduced a population of bison from North America. Half of them died the first winter. The other half, I'm happy to say, are doing quite well. This is actually one of them that I got to meet last summer when I was uh, visiting Pleistocene Park. <laughs> Lucky me. They seem to be doing very well. And this winter, the winter between when I took this picture and today, they actually had much less loss. His next step is to introduce a population of wild Przewalski's horses that have been especially bred to survive this Siberian winter. So hopefully they won't have as much problems as they did with, with bison once they're in there. But what about the extinct species? Now, there is some idea that mammoths, like elephants, might have been crucial to maintaining their own ecosystem. So in order for the African savanna to be the African savanna, elephants are necessary to be there, wandering, knocking things down, tearing stuff up. The idea here is that mammoths are probably much the same. You had to have a big mammoth in there, wandering around, tearing down the trees, turning up the soil, so that you don't get this wetland, and instead you get these rich grasslands that would support the mammoth. So, in order to have a place for the mammoth, you need the grasslands. But in order to have the grasslands, you need a place for the mammoths. So is this finally the insurmountable problem? The biggest problem, the biggest setback to being able to clone a mammoth? Sergei Zimov thinks not. He has bought two giant bulldozers. <laughs> and for the last three years, he and a couple of friends of his friends have been driving them around his proto Pleistocene plot preparing the land for the mammoth, acting like the big monster, knocking stuff down, <laughs> turning up the soil. When the time is ready, Pleistocene Park will be ready. <laughs> I was actually thinking about this the other day while I was sitting in the mosquito net under the midnight sun, having a few relaxing moments without mosquitoes bothering me, a bit of a chat with some of the other members of our expedition. I must have been really deep in thought or paying attention to the conversation or dozing off when I heard uh, a noise behind me that made me look over my shoulder. And there, standing outside of our mosquito net, were two Dolgan men. A bit scary. Kind of a surprise. Not exactly what you expect in the middle of nowhere in Siberia to have two men sneak up on you and stand there staring at you. Once my heart rate had slowed to something under 300 beats per minute, and uh, they had joined us underneath the tent, we started to have a really nice conversation. Turns out they'd seen the helicopter drop us off a few days earlier and decided to come and see who we were and what we were doing. It was their land, after all. They set out in their canoes. It had taken them a day and a half to find us. I think that's pretty good going, actually, considering we were really in the middle of nowhere. They came from a small group of Dolgan, maybe 25 individuals. They had 2,000 caribou. And if we were interested, we were invited to lunch. <laughs> of course, they wanted us to take them back on our boats with motors, I believe, that was going on. And after some really nice conversation and maybe a small amount of vodka, we started talking about the type of research that we do. And one of them turned and asked me the question that everybody always asks me when they find out what I do. Can we clone a mammoth, they said. <laughs> Not yet, I said, kind of apologetically, like I am to you today, when I thought about it. I thought, Would you like it if we had mammoths here? He thought about it for a while, actually. A lot longer than I thought he would have been considering that particular question. Yeah, I think so, he said. It might make a bit of a mess, but the kids would find them funny. And I'm a bit hungry. I'm quite tired of eating reindeer. 
<laughs> so in the end, I'm not sure anymore if it's a good idea or not to bring back a mammoth. But I do know that we've learned an awful lot about how intricately these different ecosystems are tied together, how the action of one animal in the ecosystem benefits the other animals. And I'm really impressed by how tightly knit this Pleistocene community was. And I gotta think, my sense as an explorer and maybe as a slightly crazy person, if we could have the Pleistocene megafauna bag, how much could we learn from that?